Hi everyone and thanks for watching my online lesson on probability tree diagrams without replacement. So these tree diagrams I'm going to cover in this video are considered more complicated because we don't replace whatever it is that we take out in our first choice. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I was talking about a bag of sweets, I'd be talking about picking out a first sweet and not replacing that sweet before I pick out my second. So the probabilities on our second branches change. So this is a higher tier only topic. It doesn't appear on foundation. Um, probability tree diagrams with replacement appear on foundation tier. So make sure you're a higher tier student when you're watching this video. Okay, of these more complicated questions, this one is a slightly simpler one because they've already drawn the tree diagram for me. I've just got to fill in the probabilities. So this says there are three boys and seven girls at a playgroup and Mrs. Gold selects two children at random. So on the first child that she selects, she has an option of three boys and seven girls out of a total of 10 students. So they've already filled in that the probability of a boy is three tenths. The probability of a girl then is seven tenths. And a nice way to check we're doing this right is that every pair of branches should add up to one. So here my three tenths and seven tenths adds up to one. Now if on the first child she picks a boy, so I'm looking here. If on this first child she picks a boy, what then is the probability of picking another boy? Well, if she's already picked a boy on her first choice, there will only be two boys remaining out of nine children, not ten. So the probability on this second branch here is two out of nine. And if she picks a boy on the first child, there are still seven girls in the playgroup out of nine in total. So that's seven ninths here. And again, my pair of fractions there on them branches add up to make one. Okay, what if she doesn't pick a boy on the first pick? What if she picks a girl? So I'm looking down here now. If she picks a girl on the first pick, then the chance of it being a boy, well, there'll still be three boys in the group out of nine children now to pick from. And the probability of picking a girl... Well, there won't be seven girls anymore because she's already picked one on the first pick. There'll be six girls out of nine students to pick from. Now, you'll see here that I'm not simplifying any of my fractions. So my three ninths and my six ninths do simplify, but I'm not going to simplify them. Now, with this question, the second part, it's not going to be a good example to show you why I don't simplify, but on some more complicated questions, I'll show you later why it's useful to not simplify your fractions. So the second part of this question says, work out the probability that Mrs. Gold selects two girls. So we want a girl as our first pick and then a girl again as our second pick. So that's seven tenths probability and six ninths because I want a girl and another girl and when we say and with probability we have to multiply our probabilities together so I'm going to do and I'm going to write it up here I've got a bit more space I'm going to do seven tenths that's the probability of picking a girl on the first pick and the probability of picking a girl on the second pick so I multiply them fractions multiply my numerators multiply my denominators and that is my answer there's no need to simplify your fraction unless they ask you to which they very rarely do with these questions because they're more interested in you knowing how to work with probability and not simplifying fractions okay this is a much more complicated example for two main reasons one is that they've not given me the probability tree diagram so i'm gonna to have to draw that for myself and secondly, because we've got three choices, we've got orange sweets, red sweets and yellow sweets to pick from. We've not just got girls and boys this time, we've got more options. So my tree diagram is going to be slightly more complicated. Okay, so this question says that Sarah's going to take a sweet at random from this bag of sweets. She's going to eat the sweet, which means she's not replacing it back into the bag and then take another sweet at random. 
work out the probability both the sweets are the same colour. So I'm going to start by drawing my tree diagram. So on the first pick, when she first picks a sweet out, she could either pick an orange, red or yellow sweet. So there's three options. I'm going to need three branches. This. I'd recommend you do this quite big on your page. Use quite a bit of space. I'm going to struggle here because I don't have that space. So she either picks orange, and I'm just going to put an O for orange, or she picks red, or she picks yellow. And then she's going to pick another one, and we have to think about all the possibilities. So we've got picking an orange first, and then orange, red, yellow. Red, and then orange, red, yellow. And, red, and yellow, orange, red, yellow. I'm just going to fill that in. Orange, red, and yellow. So this tree diagram is showing you all the possible outcomes. So for, so for example, this is showing you picking an orange and then picking a yellow sweet or picking a red sweet and then picking an orange sweet. That's what these branches are representing to us. So I need to add some probabilities to this so that I can work out the, the chances of all these different outcomes happening. So on the first pick, picking an orange sweet, there are three orange sweets in a bag of ten sweets. So that's going to be three tenths and I'll just write that next to the branch. Red is two out of the ten sweets. And yellow, there are five out of ten sweets. Again, don't simplify any of these fractions, just leave them in their unsimplified form, and you will see why with this question at the end. So, if she picks an orange sweet first, I'm looking at this top set of branches now, the chance of picking an orange sweet on the second pick, well, you've already taken one orange sweet out, there'll only be two orange sweets left, and the bag will contain nine sweets. So this is two ninths now. Red would be, um, there'll still be two red sweets in the bag of nine. And yellow, there will still be five out of a bag of nine. If she picks a red sweet on the first pick, there'll still be three orange sweets, but the bag will contain nine. If she picks a red on the first pick, there'll now only be one red sweet. So that's one out of the bag of nine, and there'll still be five yellows in a bag of nine. And if she picks a yellow on the first pick, there'll still be three orange sweets out of the bag of nine. There'll still be two red sweets out of a bag of nine, but there will only be four yellow sweets left out of my bag of nine. And just check again, all of these sets of branches add up to one. So here, three tenths, two tenths, and five tenths makes a whole one. Two ninths, two ninths, and five ninths makes nine ninths, which is a whole one. Three ninths, one ninth, and five ninths is nine ninths, which is a whole one. And then this final set here, I have four ninths, three ninths, and two ninths which is nine ninths and just a whole one. So it's just a nice way of checking that all my branches make sense. Okay, I've got to look at now what the question is asking me to find. This is more complicated because it's asking me to work out the probability that both the sweets are the same colour. So it's not saying that both of them have to be red or both of them have to be yellow. It can be any option. So let's think of all the possible options. We've got, first off, that the probability of picking and this is the notation we can use, orange, orange, there's just a comma there. So that's the probability of picking an orange, then an orange. So if I look at my diagram, the probability of picking an orange is three tenths on the first pick, and orange on the second pick would then be two ninths. So this is six ninetieths. The probability of picking red then red. So again, just consulting my diagram. First pick of red is two tenths, and second pick of red would then be one ninth. 
so that's two ninetieths. And the probability of picking a yellow and a yellow. So yellow, yellow would be five ninths, and then on the second, for five tenths, and then on the second pick would be four ninths. So that's twenty ninetieths. Now any one of these three options would satisfy what they've asked me, which is the probability that both the sweets are the same colour. So any one of these three would give me that probability. So I'm now looking at either orange, orange, or red, red, or yellow, yellow. And when we have all probability, we add together our fractions. And this is why we don't simplify our fractions on the tree diagram because all my denominators here are the same and that's because I haven't simplified. So I've got 6 ninetieths, add 2 ninetieths, add 20 ninetieths, which is 28 ninetieths, which made that step much easier for myself. And that's the answer. There's no need to simplify it because I've not asked me to. That's that question fully completed. Here's a question for you to try. It's not as complicated as the last one because we're only talking about white socks and black socks. We don't have that third option, but you do have to draw the tree diagram for yourself and then work out the probability that the two socks are the same colour. So think about what options that could be. I'd recommend you pause the video now, get a piece of paper or get your exercise book, try this question and then unpause when you're ready to check your answer. So here's the solution. This is my tree diagram. Unfortunately, this question, I couldn't do my nice colour coding because I couldn't write in white. But we've got probability of black is 3 eighths and white is 5 eighths. And then we've got if it's black, then it'd be 2 sevenths for black and 5 sevenths for white. And if it's white on the first pick, it'd be 3 sevenths for black and 4 sevenths for white. So Probability that uh, Stefan takes out two stocks of the same colour, that's either black, black, which is 3 eighths times 2 sevenths, or white, white, which is 5 eighths times 4 sevenths, and then add these probabilities together, you should have got 26 over 56. Okay, I've got one more question then. This question is probably one of the most complicated tree diagram questions that I've ever come across. So we've got black and white counters in three different bags and there's a different amount of counters in each bag. So it's Bernie takes out a random counter from bag A and then puts that counter into bag B. And then he takes a counter from bag B and puts it into bag C. So this is a very complicated question that requires a lot of thought. Um, I've put it as a your turn question. So feel free to pause the video and then attempt it yourself and then check and see how far you got. Just think really carefully about what's happening at each stage and how many counters are in each bag at each stage as well. So pause the video and have a go. If not, just hang on for a couple of seconds and I'll go through it with you. Okay, so I'm not just going to show you the solution to this one. I'm going to talk you through it step by step and do a worked solution. So we're starting by picking out a counter from bag A. And in bag A, there are black counters and white counters. So there are two options. Either I pick a black counter out or I pick out a white counter. Now, once I've picked that counter out of bag A, I'm going to put it into bag B but there's still only going to be black and white counters in bag B. So when I take my pick out of bag B, it's still just going to be black and white, black and white. Now your initial thought might be that you then need branches going off of these, but I'm not actually picking anything out of bag C. I just then put that into bag C. So I don't need to you know, calculate probabilities of picking a counter out of bag C because I'm not doing that. I'm just pouring it into bag C and seeing what happens about the amounts at the end. So I need to add probabilities onto these. So uh, first bags, much easier. We have six black counters out of a total of 10. And the white 
we have four black four white counters out of a total of 10. So that's the probabilities on my first branches. Now, if I pick a black counter out of bag A, I'm then going to put that black counter into bag B. So in bag B, there will now be eight black counters out of a total of 11 counters. And the white counters, there'll still only be three but there will be 11 counters in the bag. If I were to pick a white counter out of bag A and place that into bag B, there will still only be seven black counters, but the total counters would be 11. And there would be four white counters, not three, because I've added that extra one in from my first pick from bag A. So four white counters out of a total of 11. So that's what the tree diagram looks like. So this is what threw a lot of people because we're not taking one out and sort of eating it if it's a sweet or throwing it away or keeping hold of it. We're doing something with it and we're placing it into the next bag. So my denominator actually increases by one instead of the typical taking away one. Okay, that's my tree diagram. And now we've got to think about what is probability is it asking me for? It says, find the probability that there are now more black counters than white counters into bag C. So in bag C, there are five black counters and five white counters. So for there to be more black counters in bag C, I would have had to pick out a black counter from bag B to put it into bag C. So the options where I end up with a black counter in bag B is this one here, black and then black and then this one here white and then black either one of these two options this black counter that I pick here would go into bag C and I'd have six black counters and only five white counters so they're the options that I'm looking for so probability of black and black is six tenths and 8 elevenths, which is 48 over 110. And the probability of picking white then black is 4 tenths times um, 7 over 11, which is 28 over 110. So either one of these two options would work. So this or this which gives me a total of 76 out of 110. So that's the probability that I end up with a black counter being placed from bag B into bag C. So there's more black counters in bag C than there are white counters. So very tricky question, not your standard without replacement question, but testing your skills and testing you know how to answer these questions. Thank you for watching.